Welcome back everyone. We start with the new topic, climate and climate change. So, what is climate? Climate, in a narrow sense, is usually defined as the average weather. Okay? Whatever weather you, have, uh, you are seeing in the uh, surrounding environment, that is fine. The climate. Uh, weather refers to day-to-day -day temperature and precipitation activity. Okay? Or the statistical description in terms of the mean and variability of relevant quantities over a period of time ranging from months to thousands of years, the classical period is three decades. So, according to the World Meteorological Organization, they have given what is climate. Uh, weather means whatever you are seeing daily, uh, the sunset, the sunrise or uh, rainfall, uh, what is the temperature, humidity, that everything is a weather. But if it takes over the period of decades or years, uh, we, uh, in general we can say around 10 years, 15 years, if it remains same or with a variation of only 1 degree or something, then it is called climate. If the weather continuously presents same throughout the year, throughout the decade, then it is called climate. Okay? So what is climate change? Climate change refers to any change in climate over time, whether due to natural variability or as a result of human activity. If there is any change in the climate activity uh, due to human or natural uh, causes, then it is called climate change. According to the UNFCCC, that is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, they have given the definition for climate change. That means a climate or a, a change of climate which is attributed directly or indirectly to human activity that alters the composition of the global atmosphere and which is addition to natural climate variability observed over comparable time period. So, if there is any change in the environment or climate directly or indirect activity by a human, then it is called hum, uh, climate change. So, what we have seen in the recent years is sea level rise. There was an 8 inch rise in the global sea level during the last century. And the warming oceans, the oceans have absorbed much of this increased heat with the top 700 meters of oceans showing warming of 0 0.302 degrees Fahrenheit since 1969. So there was an increased heat of uh, or warming of ocean. There was shrinking of ice sheets because of uh, the ice glaciers were uh, melting due to the global warming and because of this there was a sea level rise. Next, glacier retreat. Uh, glaciers are retreating almost everywhere around the world including in the Alps, Himalayas, Andes, Rockies, Alaska and Africa. These are the mountain ranges uh, in the world. So there was a, a there is glacial retreat or glacial or what we call ice sheet melting. Then extreme event like drought or flood and ocean acidification. Since the beginning of the industrial revolution, the acidity of surface ocean water has increased by about 30 percent. That's because there are whatever impurities or waste produced in the industry, they are releasing into the water body. So there was an increased acidity or acidification of surface water of ocean. There was there is decreased snow cover. So, whenever you go to the hilly stations or uh, hilly mountain ranges, there is decreased snow cover in the recent years. Okay, that's because of global warming. So, how does climate change affect us? Climate change will affect us in social and environmental determinants of health. That's uh, those are clean air, safe drinking water, sufficient food, and secure shelter. If there is change in the climate, there will be changes in the air, water, food and shelter also. Between 2030 and 2050, 250,000 additional deaths per year expected from malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea and heat stress. So, between the year 2030 and 2050, we can expect additional 250,000 deaths just because malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea and heat stress. That's because of climate change. The direct damage cost to health is estimated to be between US dollar 2 to 4 billion year by 2030. So, by 2030 we can expect 2 to 4 billion year only to uh, treat this direct damage to the health because of climate change. 
Areas with weak health infrastructure, mostly in developing countries, will be least able to cope without assistance to prepare and respond. So, without assistance from the United Nations or WHO, these developing countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, they cannot cope up with the situation in the future. So, what are the direct and indirect impacts linked to climate change? Under direct impact, first one is thermal stress, second one is increased death due to increased floods, droughts, and storms. And under indirect impact, there is food availability and quality deficiency, decreased air quality, water availability and quality, vectors and water bodies. So, we'll see one by one. First one is direct impact, that first one is thermal stress. They can be heat stress, okay? Heat stress because of increased global warming. In the recent years, uh, I mean, you have seen the last uh, September. September was the very hot month throughout this century. There was a 0 0.009 degree Celsius increase in the heat. Okay, so that was and uh, that was result in the heat stress. That's also called thermal stress. That is a direct impact in, due to climate change. And second one is. Increased death due to increased flood, drought, and storms. Okay, due to flood. In the recent days, again, you have seen in the Kerala flood or uh, Kur flood, Assam flood, uh, there was huge loss of lives. Okay, and a drought in the regions of uh, North Karnataka and Rajasthan, and uh, storms. Okay, the huge storms uh, in the America and uh, near China. There was so much storms, and uh, so because of that, there was a huge loss of life. Then coming to the indirect impacts, there is first one is food availability and quality. So due to increased flood or drought, there will be decreased production of crops that will result in the food availability or food insecurity. The word is food insecurity. insecurity okay? So there will be decreased food availability and the quality also will be decreased. Next one is air quality. Because of air pollution, water pollution, and uh, sound pollution, everything, there will be a decreased air quality due to increased carbon dioxide uh, emission and carbon dioxide emission from the industries and uh, depletion of uh, ozone. This everything will result in a decreased air quality. Next, water availability and quality due to water uh, uh, water pollution and uh, acidification of water and uh, Pollution of the water bodies, all the fresh water bodies, that will result in the decrease in water availability and decreased quality. Last one is vector and water bodies disease. Just because there is increase in the heat, there will be increase of malaria and dengue. You know that. Okay. If there is climate change, there will be huge uh, vectors will be born and that will result in the transfer of the infection. So these are the main impacts from the climate change, direct and indirect impact. When you come to the direct impact on the climate change on the health, it comes like due to air pollution, there will be asthma and cardiovascular disease. Due to vector e ecology, there will be malaria, dengue, encephalitis, hantavirus, there are so many. Right? Due to increasing allergens, there will be a respiratory allergies and asthma. And uh, water quality impacts will result in the cholera and the cryptosporidiosis and Campylobacter, septo, sorry, uh, leptospirosis, these are the uh, due, effect due to water quality, decreased water quality. And the water and the food supply impacts will the result in the malnutrition and the diarrheal disease. And the environmental degradation, degradation will result in the forced migration and civilian conflict, mental health impacts. So the, the people may move from the one area to another area or uh, drought risk uh, where the flood is more. They can, they may move from there to the uh, safe and secured area. So that's what forced migration. Extreme heat will result in the heat-related uh, illness and death and cardiovascular failure. And severe weather will result in the injuries, uh, fatalities, mental health impact. So these are the main disease or main problems in the health due to the impact of climate change. Uh, so what were the impact in India? Okay, due to extreme heat. India is already experiencing the warming climate, okay, that's, you know. So, unusual and unprecedented spells of hot weather are expected. Under 4 degrees Celsius warming, the west coast and southern India are projected to shift. So, 
uh, there is increased uh, heat in the southern India. Okay? That's because decreased uh, forest area. Okay? Uh, to new high temperature climatic region impacts on agriculture. There will be increased uh, problem to the agriculture. So, uh, if you want to grow the rice or a wheat or barley or anything, you need high water content in the soil. If it is not there, if because of hot weather, that will be evaporated or there will be increased the uh, or decreased water content in the soil that will result in the decreased food production. There is changing rainfall pattern, okay? uh, decline in monsoon rainfall, we have seen in the this year only, there was decreased rainfall. Okay? A 2 degree Celsius rise in world's average temperature. Notice it is uh, seen in the news that temperature is rising. The major crises are triggering more frequent droughts and flooding in large parts of India. In the central India, there will be drought and uh, coast area, there will be flood. So this is the crisis now we are facing. So precipitation will change that will result in the high floods and the drought. So in the 2015, South Indian floods resulted from heavy rainfall generated by the annual northeast monsoon. Uh, more than 500 people were killed and over 18 lakh people were displaced. So this we have seen in the 2015. In 2016, Assam floods, there was uh, he, huge okay, uh, people were uh, affected, like 1.8 million people. This was there in the Indian state of Assam in July 2016. And this resulted in the crop production will uh, reduced and major investment in water storage capacity will be needed. Uh, more building of dams or water bodies for this huge investments are needed. And sea level rise uh, and storm surge that will result in salt water intrusion in the coastal area impacting agriculture, degrading groundwater quality and contaminating drinking water. The sea level is raised and it entered the coastal area and this is the uh, problem with the agriculture, water uh, bodies and the drinking water. Agriculture and food insecurity or food security, rice. Due to rising temperature with lower rainfall at the end of year, caused a significant loss in India's rice production because climate change average rice yields could have been almost 6 percent higher. If there was no climate change, there would have been a 6 percent higher production of rice, but due to climate change, there is less. Okay. And wheat, extremely high temperature in northern India, have had a substantial negative effect on wheat yields. Again, there was uh, decreased production of wheat due to high temperature. What is the remedial measure? Okay. First one is crop diversification. You can uh, grow a different crop in the different season and uh, shifting culture, uh, cultivation also you can do. Okay. And more efficient water use, improved soil management practices. You can uh, use a different modern techniques in the soil management. Together with the development of drought resistant crops can help reduce some of the negative impacts. So drought, there are uh, crops like drought resistant. Uh, things can uh, grow even during the drought. They need only little amount of the water. And regional cooperation on water issues will be made. Cooperation from the government needed to grow the crop. And what we can do? Okay? Putting health at the heart of climate change agenda, that means we are giving education, strengthening public health system, choosing healthy paths to a low carbon future, we should reduce the uh, carbon emission in the future. Mobilizing the strength of the health humanity, sorry, community. Collaborative health care. We should, we should go for a collaboration with the major systems and the government to do the health care. Response in health care. Public education, including in health care settings such as clinics and hospitals. Preventive programs, example, vaccines, mosquito control, food hygiene and inspection and nutritional supplementation. And provision of health care, uh, uh, especially in the mental health uh, program. And the surveillance of disease, especially infectious disease and environmental, social and biological factors of those disease. Surveillance means survey. You are doing survey to identify the diseases which are present here in the community. 
हेल्थ सेक्टर वर्कप्लेस वर्कफोर्स ट्रेनिंग टू अचीव क्लाइमेट रिलेटेड हेल्थ एंड एजुकेशन एंड मास मीडिया कैंपेन प्रॉब्लम ऑफ स्पार्क कमिटमेंट एंड एक्शन एमंग गवर्नमेंट इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड गवर्नमेंट सो दिस इज गिव आइडिया अबाउट द क्लाइमेट चेंज गिव द एजुकेशन अबाउट दैट एंड हाउ यू कैन रिड्यूस द क्लाइमेट चेंज और हाउ यू कैन कंट्रोल द क्लाइमेट चेंज बिकॉज रिगार्डिंग दिस यू शुड स्टार्ट अ कैंपेन एंड यू कैन गिव एजुकेशन टू द पीपल फोरकास्टिंग फ्यूचर हेल्थ रिस्क फ्रॉम प्रोजेक्टेड क्लाइमेट चेंज यू कैन predict what can be the change in the future creation of awareness and the public understanding of the global and the locally relevant health consequences of climate change we should create a awareness among the people and advocacy of interdisciplinary and intersectoral partnerships from the local to international level so local government and international government and national government that everything should cooperate cooperate and they should bring certain program to decrease this climate change and uh, improved water catchment in water deprived region we can give a more water uh, facility disaster preparedness across sectors we should be ready for the disaster and uh, there should be a preparedness okay we should be prepared with the, all the measures uh, and we can face it enhanced urban planning that is green space and green city that is nowadays it is uh, increasing in the india that is green city program we are growing the more uh, plants and the forests penalties for violation of laws regarding environmental protection must be imposed according to income status of the person industry and company and uh, based on the income of the person you should give a fine or a penalties to a person who neglect or uh, violate the laws regarding the environment environmental protection so that's what about the climate and climate change we'll see in the next class thank you